We are turning this empty garage into a woodworking workshop using plywood and a CNC router. And so far we have built only a router table, a workbench and a disc sander. And we desperately need more tools in our workshop. So today we will build the table saw with all the necessary accessories using a regular circular saw. As you know the table saw is one of the most dangerous tools in the workshop and building one can take a couple of weeks. Therefore I'm tempted to purchase one. But a decent hobby level table saw would cost me at least 700 euros. If we purchased one we would miss out on a great learning experience. Anyway, the hardest part of this project was coming up with the table saw design. It has to have adjustable rib fence, crosscut sled and adjustable precise and reliable miter gouge. Then it has to have a decent sized table surface. The first thing I had to solve was the table frame. It had to be rigid so the table saw is safe to use. At the same time, I wanted it to be made from smaller components to maximize the use of material. So I came up with the idea of having four different side frames that would support the tabletop and the shelf for accessories. Each frame would consist of four pieces, two horizontal and two vertical. This way we could save some material. To join the frames together, I decided to use reinforced box joints. The idea is to add dowel holes in each of the joint fingers. And after assembling the corner components, we can drill the holes deeper and add dowels. The dowels will ensure that the corner joint won't come apart even if we didn't use glue when assembling. Anyway, the next task was to design the rib fence. I wanted to make it similar to one used in panel saw, so we can slide the fence in different positions relative to the saw blade. This way we can adjust the fence so it's more suitable for cutting panels like plywood and MDF, or we can slide it back so it's better for cutting hardwood strips. To achieve that I decided to make a T-slot cut in the fence and make a T-profile with two screws. This way we can easily adjust the fence and secure it in place. And I used the same T-slot and profile mechanism to make the miter gouge and crosscut sled. When the design was ready it was time for CNC operations. I had cut all of the dowels and dog holes for the frame and bottom self components. To make the crafting process more efficient, I removed the support tabs and trimmed the edges while the CNC cut the rest of the table saw parts. Since some components required different bits to make them, now and then I had to pause my work to change the router bit and resume the CNC operations. Anyway, when making the adjustable miter gouge component, I made a mistake that ruined the part. I had to cut the angle markings on the CNC and I wanted to trim the edges of the gouge component. The trim bit made huge tear-outs between the angle markings. It looked terrible, so I had to remake the component. The replacement part wasn't perfect either, it had small tear-outs next to the angle markings, but it wasn't that bad. Anyway, all of the components are done and it's time for assembly. First thing, I assembled the side frames. I used the dovetail joints to join the vertical and horizontal components. It's a sturdy solution and it looks neat. Before assembling the slope table saw side, I planed the edges at a 15 degree angle using a hand planer. It had to be done so the tabletop and the shelf components would fit nicely with the frame horizontal parts. After that I could finish assembling the sloped frame and put the table together. Then it has to have casters. I flipped the table upside down and installed four smaller components that were useful when attaching the casters. They will allow me to move the table saw around the workshop effortlessly. After the table was assembled, I drilled the dowel holes deeper and added dowels. It went quickly and took way less effort than gluing the parts together. I installed the tabletop. Some dowels were sticking out a little bit. I used a hand saw to remove them and a chisel to smoothen whatever was left of the dowels after the cut. It was time to install the saw. To do that I made a small panel with holes in the same places as the circular saw's base panel. So I removed the base from the saw. Before attaching the plywood panel, I had to countersink the screw holes, otherwise the screw heads would stick out of the work surface. So I attached the new base panel to the saw. 
and then it was time to cut through the panel and install the circular saw on the tabletop. I finished adding the screws in the panel holes and I noticed something that I hadn't predicted. The saw blade wasn't perpendicular to the work surface. That wasn't good news. After a short inspection, I noticed a small axis screw that holds the saw body in place relative to the base panel had a little wiggle. Therefore, the blade is staying at an approximate 5 degree angle and can change during the cut. It meant that the table saw won't be as precise as I wanted it to be. But after a little bit of thinking, I decided to add a couple of foot pieces and zip ties to the saw body. This would fix the blade in place so it wouldn't change angles during cuts. After this simple trick, the saw blade was more or less perpendicular to the work surface. It wasn't the best solution and it limits the functionality of the saw quite a bit, but it will work just fine for the projects I have in mind. Anyway, it's time to assemble the attachments. The first one was the rib fence. To reinforce the joints, I used the same dowel method that we used for the frame's corner joints. To finish the rib fence, I had to make the T-profiles that would fit in the T-slot groove. To do this, I used the router table we built in the first garage workshop episode. When the T-profile was done, we could install the M8 screw in the pockets and put everything together. And the rib fence was ready for use. As the first cut on the table saw, I made a couple of strips of plywood. These will be used as the T-profiles for the miter gouge and the crosscut sled. When the T-profiles were ready, I assembled the other accessories. For the crosscut sled, I decided to use dowel reinforcements. Also, I made a small stopper panel that will be useful when doing precise cuts. Last but not least, I assembled the miter gouge. I also made an adjustable stopper with a flippable positioning stick. And I also glued the measuring tape for the rip fence. Finally, the table saw was ready for use. To test it out, I will make a couple of segments that should result in something like this. It's a great way to test out the precision of the saw, the miter gouge and the rip fence. While cutting the strips for the segments, I used the triangle push stick. It gives more control over the workpiece, therefore making the working on the table saw safer. I recommend you make some of these for your workshop. We have multiple push stick options available on the Ariba Box website, so feel free to download your favorite one. Anyway, it was time to set the angle for the segments on the miter gouge. I set the angle at 30 degrees and made the cuts. After I had made six of the segments, I laid them out on the table in a circular pattern and put a rubber band around them. The rubber band will pull the segments together and highlight any imperfections with small gaps between the parts. In this case, there aren't big gaps between the segments. So I'm satisfied with the result and how the table saw turned out. One more cool thing is you can replace the saw panel with a router, turning the table saw in a router table. And if you figure out a way how to attach a jigsaw to the panel that fits inside here, you can turn this table into an improvised bandsaw. Anyway, if you enjoyed this build, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.